What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate, reverse rants, no hate. Take a listen to this interview in regards to Adrian Broner. And this is Robert Garcia being interviewed. I'm sorry, one more last question. Uh, and it's just more like a respectful, and I know you're going to have a positive message, but you've been in a, you, you trained many fighters against Adrian Broner, and Broner, you know, pulled out recently in the mental issues and, uh, and, and the fight. Do you, do you have any, like, positive, you know, reinsurance? Because, you, you know, you trained against him. I know Broner personally. I know, I know him personally. He's a great person, man. You know, I know the media, people that don't know him might think he's arrogant and they don't like him or whatever, but he's actually a great person, man. I've, I've, here in Vegas, I've, I've been with him, I handle with him, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've talked for hours. He's a great person, I, you know, and if he's going through some personal problems, you know what, uh, hopefully he, he gets better from that. I would, I would have actually loved to invite him into my training camp, uh, not, not so I could train him, but maybe just so he could recover and get better, because being around world-class fighters, training around, you know, the Jesse Rodriguez, the Jose Ramirez, is, you know, not because I want to train him, but just invite him so he could do something different, get away from what he's used to, and, you know, live in my camp house and train and, and, and just hang out will probably help him out a lot. So, you know, uh, if, if, if uh, he's willing to do it, I'll be more than happy to invite him to my training camp just so he could recover. I know uh, we've, we've had some problems with some with the fighters, you know. We just don't, don't we haven't told the media but some of my fighters, you know, have had mental problems also. But we deal with it. We we deal with it. We know how to deal with it, and they get better. And you know, they they get back to becoming world champions. In, you know, in the future. So can Adrian do the same? Yes. And I would, you know, and, and if he's willing to to take my effort, I would love to have him in my camp just to get him away from all that bullshit in his in his life and and focus on something different. Awesome. Thanks for the time. Awesome. Um, wish you guys best. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Now, I can respect what he's saying, but let me address the fan boys that took this way out of contents, and you can even look at comments that people left, and they have different people who show this clip. First of all, his opinion is his opinion, and he has a right to it. Okay, just like I have a right to mine. Again, let me say, Adrian Broner is a 33-year-old grown-ass man. This is not some little kid that needs to go to reform school who's getting kicked in and out of, out, out of class and, and, and being chased by truancy officers and skipping, skipping school. This is a grown man. Now, as far as bringing him into the camp that like just have him around fighters and try to, you know, get him to like rehabilitate him. Beautiful. If, if Adrian is willing to do that, but here's the reality. If a grown man cannot take himself out of the situations that he's in, what's he going to do? That's going to be so different. Cause what people are overlooking, like Robert Garcia, he's a great guy. And the media, you know, portrays, no, the media didn't portray him ripping up money, flushing it down the toilet, talking about how I don't I don't care nothing but fifties and hundreds, yo, I don't do this. The media didn't portray him. It was him who fucking, you know, told a girl at Walmart, what you give me change back for? You don't know who I am and all this arrogant shit and constant get just getting in the shit. That's him. It's no different from a drug addict going into rehab. Once they get into rehab, they decide, nah, man, I gotta, you know, I gotta get back out. I, and, and, and what do they do? They don't finish. They, they disappear. They never come back. So for him to offer that, yeah. But, you know, to try to speak on behalf of him in a way of like somebody's portraying him. No, this is what he portrays. This is not somebody. This is not he said, she said. This is stuff that he does in, on camera. This is what he does. Yes, he's arrogant. No say, oh, people think that he meant. No, he is arrogant and, and, and pompous. He may have humbled somewhat in terms of that because he he doesn't have money like that. He's not on, he's not on that same success trail that he once was on. But at the same time, we're looking at what Adrian Broner does, what he say, not stories about him, but things that he say and do. 
People was talking about, oh, TMT ain't doing nothing for him. That's fucked up how they turned their back on him. And uh, again, not holding him accountable for what he do. You don't think that Floyd and these guys see the difference in him? Then on top of that, he bites the hand that feeds him. He comes on every time he gets a chance. He comes on an interview and talks so much shit about Floyd. But yet you need help. What's Robert Garcia going to do? That's going to change Adrian. And like he said, if he be willing to do it, right? And then what? Then what? Let's not forget. Adrian's the one telling Al Heyman, keep me busy, man. Give me fights. Because like, man, you know, like when I'm, when I'm training, when, I'm, when I got a fight, I, I'm not in trouble. I'm only, only getting in trouble when I'm not training. This is a grown man saying this. To be honest with you, Robert Garcia, you said you cool, you friends with him. I've learned in life, there's certain people, the best way, the best way for us to stay cool is to stay away, is to just stay away from each other. Because once you extend your hand and help him, you just might find out firsthand why Heyman, Floyd, L L B, whoever, whoever, like. Why they don't see the value in this guy anymore. Like you're saying, not to train him as a fighter, but just to help him to, you know, rehabilitate. We get it. But even in that sense, if he's not getting any money, if he's not able to do anything like that, you got to understand, Adrian Broner is in control of himself. Not Floyd, not you, not anyone else. So I can understand and appreciate the gesture, but it's like I had friends at some point where parent kicks him out tell him look you got to the end of the month you ain't got a job but then you got to go that's the story that you get and it sounds harsh and mean you look out for that person because that's your friend then all of a sudden you start to realize why the parent treat them that way and why and it's like look first off i mean bringing people into your house when you're not there after you told them i don't want nobody in this house you understand what i'm saying you're here you're welcome to eat clean up behind yourself Simple. Respect the house rules. Don't bring nobody in my house. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. All of a sudden, you're supposed to get back by 12. You end up getting back on by 9 or 10, and you got a house full of people smoking. And oh, hell, oh, okay. Stealing from you, all types of shit. Then you start to understand, yeah, this is more than what I, what I thought. As much as you think you know him, you certainly wouldn't know him as much as Floyd and the other people that's been around him much longer than you. And also understand people don't do the same things in front of certain people than they would in front of others. That's the thing. As far as Adrian, he has to want to help himself. So to be honest with you, it doesn't matter if he's around Floyd, if he's around. And obviously, he's not around Floyd. And this is the thing. People keep saying like the, the stuff that he's around. This is a grown man. Take yourself away. When Floyd was talking to him, everybody was saying, oh, Floyd's just a hater. He's jealous. Jealous of what? Of what? Then they said, Floyd's holding him back. No. Floyd, okay? TMT right now. They've been saying for a while, we're trying to keep the money in-house. That wasn't even the thing when Adrian Broner was doing his thing. Do you guys seem to forget? He's holding him back from opportunities. This man, he fought Pacquiao. He fought Keith Thurman. He fought Paulie Malignaggi. He fought Marcos Mardana. He fought Mikey Garcia. Do you guys forget that? He fought Jesse Vargas. Do y'all seem to forget? The best he's done with the very top guys he's ever fought was either lost to them or got a draw with them. What do you mean? What do you mean? They're holding him back. No, he's holding himself back. They don't see dedication. They don't see the commitment there. They don't see the hunger there. And they still see the same problematic grown man, okay, that they've been seeing for a while. And when Floyd said, you got to change the way you do things. You know, you get older, you say things when you're younger, you see things differently, you start to get older. But he was a hater for trying to, hey, look, like he told, he told, told Tank the same thing, man, you got to leave Baltimore. You got to leave Baltimore, man. You can't be successful and continue to be around the same environment and the same people that 
pretty much, they don't have goals like you do. So what they're doing, they expect you to be a part of it to show you still one of them. I'm still that dude. You understand what I'm saying? I'm still that same nigga I was before. Ain't nothing changed. I'm a real nigga. I'm still, this. understand it. Let's just say it like, like it is. You can't change anybody. A person has to want to change. I can see him now pouring his problems on Robert Garcia and trying to blame everybody else. It probably wouldn't even take a week and Robert would be going, damn, I can see what it is with Adrian, man. Why would Adrian come to your house to train for free? Come to your camp and live there and chill there and all that for free. When right now he need to be out here getting money. He need to be out here taking care of himself. He need, Right? No. But every chance he get, like I said, he's going to make his voice heard, blaming everybody for his problem instead of his own. Because just like I said before, talking about how him and Floyd, you know, if he was in Floyd's position, if the roles was reversed, he would have made sure that they had that $100 million fight. What happened to all the other millions that you blew? What happened to all of that? Mental health issues? Let me just tell you something else about people. When people end up on heart pressure medicine, they're taking pressure pills, they're always in and out of a doctor's office, something's always wrong. A lot of times, what they, you know, what they overlook is this. You put yourself in these stressful situations. Doctors will tell you stress will kill you. You need to change how you're doing things. Slow down. Get away from all of that. That's what the doctors are saying. The doctor's not saying, come to my home and I'll let you stay there and live with me until I can help you rehabilitate yourself. No, you have to want to change. You have to want to change. Now, if he could be the influence and a spark that maybe make him see things different, hey, but do you really trust that? Do, do you really think that it's everybody else's fault? So who is Adrian trying to get away from? Because he's not around Floyd. He's not around him. He's not around Al. He's trying to get fights. Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't he the one that just canceled his last fight saying that he had mental health issues? So he had a fight lined up and he blew it. He canceled. And this is why he's in training camp. So he's going through all of this, right? So again, he needs to be focused on his life, on boxing, getting serious and how he could help himself. He can't do all of that when he's torn between, man, this is what I do to make my money. But at the same time, fuck boxing. I'm going in the Hall of Fame. And see, you always hear this arrogance, this ego, and this immaturity in what he says when he doesn't get it. Blame everybody else. Blame everybody but me. Because now, once you realize what you've done wrong, then it makes you go, damn, I need to change. But when you blame everybody else, it's just, nah, nah, it ain't me, it's them. They don't understand me. See, they don't understand what I'm going through. They, well, whatever you claim they don't understand, they're not the ones with mental health issues. They're living their lives and they're doing what they're supposed to do. You know? <sighs> Look, y'all. It's one thing to be supportive of a person. And I commend, you know, Robert Garcia for what he's saying. But it's also a different thing to overlook what the problem is. When the problem is the person you're trying to help, you have to understand what is it that this person is doing that I'm going to really be able to help them with. Because you have to deal with the root of the problem. And you can't do that by fucking walking on eggshells and dancing around where the problem's coming from. I had a friend, though he's still my friend, okay? But I had to tell a friend. He kept coming to me, complaining about everybody. And it's one particular guy he kept complaining about. I'm I'm not seeing seeing any of this stuff he's saying, but I'm around this guy way more than he is. So I'm I'm trying to understand where this energy is coming from. And after careful analyzation and being spending time with both and seeing, you know, just really getting to know these people. Through, you know, it's like three fucking years straight, this guy always has something to say and always imagining shit. And I'm, I'm hung out with this guy, met his family, all this, you know, and I'm not the type of person that just welcomes somebody into my home or I walk them into their home. You know, I'm not that, I'm, I, I, I have to know, feel like I know you. And a lot of times you think you know someone and you don't, but I had to come out flat out and he was talking one day and I'm looking at him and I said, let me ask you something. 
How many times have you ever hung out with him? I don't hang out with that motherfucker. I don't even know why you hang out with him, Aries. That motherfucker ain't like us. I said, what you mean like us? I'm not like you. What the fuck you mean? Nah, man, he this and this. And I said, man, you know the conclusion that I've drawn between you and him? You only see him at work from a distance. Y'all don't even work in the same department. And y'all don't talk to each other. How much can you say about someone that you have no dialogue with? Now, I'm telling you, man. No, you ain't telling me nothing. You know, I'm going to tell you something that nobody else probably going to tell you. And I'm telling you, as a friend, and you take it for what it's worth. He's not the problem. Motherfucker, the problem is you. You the motherfucking problem. You the one creating this bullshit in your head. You the fucking one walking around here angry about nothing. It's something about him that you don't like. But it's nothing that he's done to you. And you can't pinpoint anything. You just don't like him and always say shit that has nothing to do with you. Rumors and stuff that you hear from an old girlfriend and all this. This man that moved on with his life, got his woman, their kids. They're out here living their life chilling. You the motherfucking problem. You. Man, I'm your brother. How you like? Motherfucker, I'm telling you. All right? Call it tough love. You the motherfucking problem. And if you can't be honest with people. See, because he is not the kind of person I could say, look, man, I think you overreacted. I'm around this guy way more than you are. I've actually hung out with him, been around his family. He's a down-to-earth guy. He's a family man, and the stuff that you talk about is not even existing in his life. And you just keep talking about some ex-girl that's disgruntled because he left her ass and told her, don't call me, lose my number, blocked her, and then got a restraining note on her ass. Now, you are going through all of this based on what? Well, what has that guy done to you that you keep talking about him? I don't come to you asking you nothing about anybody. But you always have a story to tell. Me talking to him like that is like he hear me. But yeah, but, 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 but. So I have to look, you the motherfucking problem. Now, you know, his feelings is hurt, but he's trying to understand like, no. Now it opens the door for me to say the same things that I've always said to him. But now that I've opened his ears and mind up to you are the fucking problem. Now let me explain to you how. Just by reiterating things that I've already said to you. But now, because I feel more confident and comfortable in my decision of how I see things because I've been around it, where you have never been around this guy. Truth be told, the same girl that he's talking about, the same woman, rather, that he's talking about, the one that got dumped, he was crazy about her and chasing her around, but he was dating her at the time. And that's where the anger and the hatred came from. They don't even know each other. They just see each other from a distance and pass each other in the parking lot, and somehow he has everything to say about this guy. Case in point, you cannot help someone that don't want to be helped. And for you to keep, for people to keep talking, when it, I don't know, it's like when it comes to Adrian, a lot like Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was doing a bunch of asshole type shit, and you hear Mike Tyson, you know, not too long ago saying, I don't like the person I used to be. He said he don't even like to watch old films of himself because he remember the times when stuff that was happening. Like people remember the fights, but he remember things he did before those fights, in between those fights, and he don't like to even remember that person. Look how old Mike Tyson is. So it took Mike Tyson years to come to that conclusion to really even admit those things. Adrian Broner is still on a rampage of it's Floyd's fault, it's Leonard's fault, it's Steven Espinosa's fault. It's everybody's fault except for mine. It's my baby mama's fault. It's my neighbor's fault. It's Reverend Creflo Dollar's fault. It's everybody's fault except for mine. You can't help a person that don't want to get helped. And unless you're going to shoot straight with his ass, you're not helping him. All you're doing is giving him a temporary break from something that he's going to go right back to. Now, if it's something he wanted to do, it doesn't bother me personally either way. But it's just one of these things when I hear people say this shit and I'm reading comments and for all the other people that reposted this video as well and everything, it's like, why do y'all continue to baby this man and talk like this guy? Like it's it, 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 it like he's not responsible for his own actions. So, I mean, I tip my hat to Robert Garcia for the gesture and what he's saying because he is not something he has to do. But I feel like he'd be doing it out of good faith. And of course, that if, if it did work that way, 
And Adrian Broner decided that, hey, you know what? I feel like I'm in a better space. I appreciate that. Hey, listen, man, we've been working and training together. Why not just become a team? And, you know, I, I, you know, I fight for this. You know, whatever. However it will go. Whatever. If it will help him, right? I guess you can say you'll never know till you try it, right? But at the same time, it's, your methods of trying to do this may work for the fighters that it did. It might work for him. Who knows? But personally with Adrian, it's just too much of the same thing. I mean, if Adrian was even mature enough to even say, you know what? I'm responsible for my own actions. It's not Floyd's fault. It's not them. It's me. I'm grown. I should know better. You talking to a man that left home at 18 and ain't never, ever had to go live with nobody ever since. Always been on my own. Took care of myself. Worked. Finished school. Got my own car. House. All that kind of stuff. Just went on and, and you know, had a, got a family. All that stuff. You understand what I mean? You ain't talking to somebody who... You know, like, it, 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 bottom line is all of us should have common sense to know. You are accountable for what you do. And for Adrian to be on a, the, the stage that he was on and, and ruin that because he want to still be that street nigga running around in clubs, getting in fights, punching people in the face, choking women because, I mean, I thought you stole my bag. All, all this crazy, just, I mean, like a kid. Stuff that kids do. And now because you need a handout, Yo, big bro, I need you, right? See, I know people like that. We got those relatives. We got those so-called friends that you never hear from. The motherfuckers don't call you in so long. They call you like, who the fuck is this? It's me, man. Yeah, what you need? Yeah, well, I got it, but I ain't giving it to you. Now, when you call just to say hello, just to say how the family's doing, cool. Don't call me just because you need something. I never do that to you or anybody else, all right? You stay up, click. I don't care how they take that shit. Because that's just the whole point. When I need you, I will remember how to get to you. When I don't need you, or I feel like I don't need you, I'm gone. Simple. And that's using people. So, one minute, yo, big bro, I need you more than ever. The next minute, all oh, Floyd's a hater. I don't think he want to see me with that kind of money. And this and that. He, he should have been made sure I got paid. What? What? He should have been made sure you had a $100 million fight with him, huh? All this kind of stuff. That's how it goes. I'm arrogant, and I'm doing dumb asshole shit when I get the money. I'm paid. I'm popping bottles. I'm wasting my, my money. I got a lot more of that coming in. Last fight he had, everybody was saying, I think Adrian, Adrian's back. He's on the right path, even though he got gifted that fucking win. And at the end of the day, what happened? Right back to rock bottom. The man has been a rapper, a porn star, and an alcoholic. Right? His life is going upside down, but it's him talking in front of the camera what he's doing and fuck everybody. I don't need none of them. I'm going to do this. I got this. Blah, blah, blah. And, I mean, come on. It's like you got that son that goes to school. He works and does everything he's supposed to. And you got that other one that decide that the streets is where they want to be. Getting chased by cops. You don't see him three, four days in a row. Come back smelling bad, looking bad, dirty. Just need a shower, change clothes, eat whatever's home. And it. Now, I'm not going through that, but I know a lot of people that, that is. And I've been in situations where I was around it. So, you know, but yeah. You know, thankfully, fortunately, my kids don't give me problems at all. Don't get in any trouble. And I'm just grateful for that. And, you know, but yeah, just saying. And then, but but then, that kid that's cutting up and acting up will say that you're showing favoritism. You have something to be proud of with this kid. We're trying to get you on the right path. It's not trying to make you be him. It's trying to get you to go in the right direction. Choose something legal to do. Something that you like to do. Nobody's pressuring you. This is what you should know. What do you want to do? Because you're not going to be coming back and forth in and out of you know someone's house and then you basically don't live there because you spend all your time out in the streets. You're never home. But then when you do come home, like I said, shit, shave, shower. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's eat. Go another four or five days. This is, I've seen it. Okay. I had people in my family like that. People that I know personally. Period. Like I said, I, I, I know what goes on. And it's like, no. Nah. What are you proud of? 
No, they still love you. They just don't like what you do. And they feel for you. And they also understand you out here running from drug dealers, shooting at drug dealers, getting into these like gang beefs. Cops is on your ass. You don't have an address of your own. So you know where they trace your address back to? Your mother and father's house or whoever your caretaker is, whoever your provider is. That's where they come looking for you. Cops then came with battering rams, knocking people doors and looking for a person that don't even live there. You are basically just using whoever is taking care of your ass as a launching pad. Like I said, change your clothes, eat, be gone. This is what they do. Now, I don't know Adrian Broner personally, but what I'm saying, you've always seen this guy in between fights, in handcuffs, in somebody's courtroom, then sitting up on Vlad or wherever else trying to explain the situation, but it's always somebody else did something to me. Simple people, I'm going to say it one more time. When you cannot admit to yourself what you're doing wrong, you will not change that about yourself. You will continue to do wrong and you will continue to want everybody around you to change except for you. When people like that end up putting a gun to their head, taking their own life, cutting their throat, whatever. Just any something to, they become alcoholics, drug addicts. They can't, they don't, the thing is they don't want to listen to anybody. And in my experiences, I've learned that people do not want to hear anything from you until they're ready to change. But when you are coming to them, talking to them as if you, I understand you, man, you know, it's not you, it's the people around you. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. And, and blah, 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 blah. And it, mm -mm. So, you know, like I said, I, 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 hey man, I tip my hat to Robert for what he's offering, but Adrian has to want to help himself. And again, man, to keep the relationship like it is, it's probably best that Robert stay away from Adrian Brown in that situation. Because think about this, Adrian himself, he could come up with, I need to do something to change myself. I need to do something to make things better. No, instead he's going around him, 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 and him. It's their fault. Not mine, y'all. And it's just one of them things where you look at it and you think, damn, you know, look at what he was doing at one point in his life. He got a chance to live his dreams. He done been in the ring with Hall of Famers, future Hall of Famers. He lost to them. But bottom line is his mind is out doing everything other than focusing on boxing. You have to, you know, you have to want to get away. You have to understand what's good for you and what's not good for you. So it's up to Robert Garcia to do what he's, you know, he's offered, you know, his hand of friendship and trying to help rehabilitate him. It's up to him. That's what he chooses to do, just like it's up to Adrian to accept or decline. If he accepts, wish them but the best for him. If he declines, and that's simply by just not responding because this is a fight hype interview, so you know damn well Adrian at some point is going here. And, like, and look, not only that, they probably have each other's number. They know how to reach out to each other. But at the end of the day, it's up to him. So if he doesn't accept, I mean, you can look at it either way, but what does that tell you? It's the only time will tell. I wish the brother nothing but the best, but this is a situation where he needs to understand. Adrian, you need to get your shit together. You're 30 fucking three. Okay, 23 is too old for that shit, but you are 10 years senior to 23, and you're still running around out here with your life upside fucking down. And people are trying to help you and reach out to you. But that arrogance, that ignorance, and that childish little ego, nobody can tell me nothing. That is the fucking problem. And like Floyd said, you call yourself the problem, but you are the problem. And that's where people are overlooking. That's what they're overlooking. You know, even when, it, you know, when you lose a fight and you find it in you to have to yell out, I came from water and cornflakes and all like, okay, I ain't even supposed to be here. Okay, only thing happened was you trained for a fight so that your opponent, he whooped your ass. Why are you talking about what you came from? Simple. The better man won. It's like a bitterness. You understand what I'm saying? A resentment to something. I just feel it. I can't express. I'm, 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 I'm just talking. And then, no, you realize even when you're not mad, you seem mad. You're just talking crazy. Came from water and cornflakes. Okay. 
You're not the only one. You you had people that lived worse than you did. What did that have to do with you winning or losing a fucking fight, though? Simple. So, anyway, y'all, tell me what y'all think in the comment section. Never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth to bring us hate out of people, and I will catch y'all on the next video.